Oh, yes. How do you have and rise in it? And so, like I said, God orchestrated a testimony. So I'm going to invite Anna up here. We're going to go over, but please don't look at the clock right now because I'm telling you, God created a modern day Esther story. I didn't create this, you know what I mean? And I wasn't even at the beginning of this. I wasn't any part of this. I just happened to be the tail end of it. You know what I mean? But God has been crafting this story. And I asked Anna on Saturday to share. I'm like, you know, I know you're not planning to do testimony, but like, I really feel God wants you to give testimony with you. And she's not, she don't like this, but she's, <laughs> she said, I feel like I have to. So um, I'm going to try and help get us through the story. Um, so why don't you tell your background of your Christian experience first? Yeah, so I, um, I, I grew up in the church. And this is, this is a story you guys probably know. Um, I, I grew up in the church, and I went to a Christian college. Um, and I swiftly walked away after graduating from, um, from that college. Actually, I ran a lot. Um, and I ran for a long time. Um, so when I moved here to Oahu back in February, I um, went on Google Maps to look for a church because I, I wanted to give it a try. And I found here. And um, uh, I reached a point in March, this past March, where I had been coming here a couple of times. And, and then I had just given up. And I, I walked through those doors. And the, the resolve I had in myself was that I will never walk into another church again because I'm done, um, because I have no reason to keep coming back. And why did you get to that place? What was the pain you were feeling? You said, said then three-year period, what had happened that made you become so disillusioned, angry, and hurt by the church? Um, so the thing about a Christian college is that people go to get a stronger faith, and... Um, that's, that's the reason I wanted to go. And uh, what ended up happening was that um, I, in the span of three years, uh, I, I lost three people, one to an accident and, and one to cancer and one to suicide. And it was just back to back to back. And um, I was given the book of Job so many times that by the third time I had lost someone, I really just wanted to fight anyone who would try to tell me to read Job and to, and to just accept what had happened because I, I was past the point where I was, I was accepting. Okay, so now fast forward. You're now getting ready to jet out of these doors and you're telling God, never again, I'm done. And then what happens? Um, so I don't know if you guys remember when Chastity and Matt gave their testimony. Um, it was about losing their baby girl. And I, I was sitting over there. Um, and I just remember Matt just Matt saying how hard it was, and he didn't understand, and it, none of it made sense, and I just needed to hear that. I just needed to hear someone be human and say that it's not fair, and no one had, no one had taught me how to grieve. No one had taught me how to mourn, and so just someone who was older and had gone through it too, I could see them up here just being completely honest and also knowing that they had to learn the hard way too. And I just needed to see that in a church setting with someone who said there was a, they were a follower of Christ that they just didn't understand. And then so after that, you realize, okay, I can't run. So you went to talk to Pastor Earl. Yeah, so after I saw Matt talk, um, I went and looked for Pastor Earl because he was one of the first people I met. He's probably, for a lot of you, the first people you guys met. Um, and I went up to him. And I still don't know why. I, I just planned to jet out of church because that's what I do. But I just went up and I, I said, you know, this was, I walked through those doors thinking this was the last time um, that I was going to come to church. And I was so ready to just let this all go. And then Pastor Earl just looked at me and gave me the, the biggest hug. And then I guess in that moment I knew that I had to come back. I, I couldn't. I had just been introduced to something new and something that didn't feel like the Christianity I had ever experienced before, so I, I can't give up now. Yeah, and I, I just want to take a moment to encourage Pastor Earl because I, I remember this story clearly because I remember he chased after her 
And he, yes. he chased after her and he forced my daughter, Misha, who she has told him profusely that she doesn't like this, but she forced him, she forced Misha, she dragged Misha too, and she wanted Anna to meet Misha. And the only reason why I'm sharing that is because that became like a bridge, okay? And so you met Misha and then what happened next? Um, Misha and I started talking and she invited me to Tuesdays. Um, and it's just crazy that the way this happened, because if I had my choice, I would just surf my brains out every day. But, but Misha was like, and the worship team comes together on Tuesdays. And I was like, I don't want to get on stage. And she was like, well, we have a, we have a small group, too. You can, you can just talk. And I was like, so I don't have to be on stage. And she was like, yeah, just come to small group Tuesdays. I was like, OK. So I, I started coming Tuesdays. But really, I, like, I dragged my butt every Tuesday. Every Tuesday, I did not want to come. And Misha kept being like, oh, you're coming today. <laughs> and I was like, I guess I will. Hey, I want, I, my point is for you to see divine providence. OK? Yeah. I've been at this church for 24, almost 25 years. Worship team has never done Ohana group. We have never done small group. And for whatever reason, this was a season that our church was in to just stoke that value of community and small group. And I remember you kicked and screamed, I kicked and screamed. Yep. Tuesday nights was my K-drama night with my dog. It was the only night that I had to myself. Everybody else was at worship practice, so I stayed home. All you mamas in the house, you know how treasured that time is. And Pastor Earl said, come on, Pastor Teresa, you got to do small group. I'm like, I don't want to do small group. You got to do small group. You were like, I don't want to do it. Okay, fine, I'm going to do it. And so then the kids are like, but mom, what about your, your day with, Doc, with Duke? And I'm like, oh, I just got to give up my day with Duke. It's fine. It's fine. You know, I'm just going to go and I'm going to like raise up another leader and eventually I'll see myself out. You know, so I was kicking and screaming along with you. God has a sense of humor, but he has a divine plan. And every time she would show up, there was some kind of testimony that yeah. really, I don't know, it was like God knew what you needed to hear. So what was that, what was that like? Yeah, I mean, I, I won't go into specifics for a lot of these, but, you know, Misha, you were super vulnerable and honest. It was just, it just came down to I needed to have faith restored in people in the church. Like, as much as I, there were parts that I was angry at God for you know, the experience I had in a faith setting and, you know, why people couldn't accept me for who I was. And it was really just people. Like, it, it wasn't so much God. And so people, Misha started just being honest and, and me being like, wait, I'm her. And she's still here. Like, she comes back every Tuesday and Sunday. Like, I could do that too. But um, it all really came to a head this Tuesday. Um, we, I came to work. I did not want to come. <laughs> I wanted to go surfing, but I dragged my butt here, and we were, we were, we were, you know, doing our small group, and, and Pastor Teresa, no one was talking, Pastor Teresa was like, well, I guess I'll talk, and then she, she shares about her own experience in a, in a, in a Christian college, and for both of us, um, it, it was incredibly difficult, um, and I was not planning to share, but she shared that, and I, I started sharing my own story, and then I remember in my head, I came to a decision that I needed to talk I had two criteria. I, I said to myself, I'm, I'm going to talk to Pastor Teresa. It has to be her. And it has, I need to make it clear. It has to be a judgment-free zone because I'm going to be really honest. Um, and at, and um, at the end of the, end of the group, Pastor Teresa goes, well, you know where to find me. If you want to have coffee, I offer a judgment-free zone. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there all poker-faced. And in the end, I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know, my gosh, when she approached me. I mean, I thought people would approach me, but I, and, and normally I don't offer that, okay? But I don't know, God told me to offer it. I'm like, oh, God, you want to offer it? Fine. You know, I wasn't expecting her to go to me, so when she did, I must have looked at her like, she was very surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why would you talk to me? You know what I mean? But anyways, be, we're going to fast forward to that moment later, but something was shared <laughs> that this was the turning point. Yeah, I... Um, Dawson, who, who was here the first service, he was talking about um, how he, he's decided to let go of all the control he's tried to hold over his career in the military. It's been such a big thing for him, and it's a dream, and it, it just hasn't come to fruition the way he thought, so he's, he's finally letting go. And uh, I, um, as some of you guys know, I've been hustling. I work two jobs. I just quit the second job, but I'm really, <laughs> it's hard. Um, so <laughs> I, I, financial instability is not something I'm good at, and the more I lose control, the more I just try to grab it. And so um, I made a very conscious decision on the car ride back 
which was partly inspired by Micah because I, Micah also in small group one time was like, I just talked to God in the car, real casual, like, and I was like, I should try it. <laughs> and, so, and then I, I was in the car and I was like, I'm giving it up. You want it? Take it. I'm not, I can't control my future. I can't control my finances. I can't control anything right now. Like, please take it. I gave him that and I gave him this situation I have with this friend. We had a big fallout almost a year ago at this point. Like, you know, the kind of fault where you're just betrayed and deeply hurt and you think there's no chance for forgiveness or reconciliation. That's what I've been in for a straight year. And I've carried this. And so I, I just, I gave them both up. And, you know, hearing Dawson being able to just say that he, he's willing to do it, I was like, oh, well, I, I better give it a try. And then what happened two days later, or actually the next day? So this was Tuesday. On Wednesday, you, you asked God for a sign. On Wednesday, what was the sign? I asked for a sign. I, uh, what I said in the car was, you need to say his name. I need to hear his name. If you, want me to, if you want me to do this, you need to say his name. And I'm having a conversation with my coworker, and she's talking about her friend who has a very common name. And the friend I have has a not common name. So she's saying her story. She's like, oh, Sam, blah, 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 blah. And then with full confidence, she drops my friend's very unique name. And then she stops and she's like, that's funny. I don't know anyone named blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know much about science, but uh, I'll, I'll act on this. <laughs> Amen. Coincidence? I think not. Divine providence. OK, so you acted. God gave you your sign. What happened? I reached out. And um, I should, I'll, I'll premise with I have reached out to this friend multiple times, and every time I've been rebuffed. And, and this was kind of my Hail Mary. It was like, I got the sign. But this is my last time. This is it. And so I, I reached out, and he reached back, and he said he was willing to meet. And we, we met, and, you know, it, it didn't go how I thought it would, it would go for some, in some aspects. Um, we talked about how we had hurt each other and how this made us feel. And at the end, I said, I'm willing to put this all past us if you're willing to try. Like, are you willing to try to be friends and move past this? And he was like, oh, well, you know, this, this. I was like, are you willing to try? He was like, no. And I was like, are you willing to try? Um, and I, in that moment, I just had this, it just flipped. And I realized, like, for the past six years, it's been me. God has been like, are you, are you willing to try? And I've been like, no. I can't believe you let this person do this to me. I can't believe you inflicted all this damage, or I can't believe you let these people inflict all this damage. He's like, are you willing to try? Are you willing to try? And each time I said, no, like I can't do this right now. And so I was saying this to my friend and him just saying, no, I can't. And I was just like, then we're done. Like this conversation is over and until you're ready, I will be ready, but right now we're done. And I drove off and they cried in my car and asked God why I had to do that. And he was like, so that you know, like it just isn't time. Amen. But you said something very important to me. For the first time, you knew that forgiveness had been released. Now you're just waiting for God to finish the reconciliation, yeah. right? Okay. Now, after that, it's not. It gets better. <laughs> Remember, I told you that when you surrender, the divine favor of God comes on your life, and He accelerates you. And then she tells me what happens it was Thursday. Yeah, right? and then the next day. <laughs> This is all after I just, I just decided to let go. I yes. just gave everything up. And so the next day, I get a call um, from a job I had applied for, you know, beginning of summer that I was underqualified for, and I was definitely the youngest applicant. Um, and they, it was with Hawaii Land Trust, and they said, we have a position for you, um, and we need you in two weeks. So I am moving to Kauai. I'm moving back to Kauai, and I'm going to work with Hawaii Land Trust up on the North Shore. Um, yeah, I know. Okay, talk about acceleration. She got a dream job, because if you know her, this is a dream job. She's not qualified, but the divine favor qualified her. And if that wasn't good enough, then they told her that, by the way, the three people you're going to be working with is ABC, and every single one of those people she already has a working relationship from before when she was in Kauai. So not only did he give her a landing strip to land, gave her the perfect job, gave her the perfect people to work with. Woo! Only our God can do that. <laughs> so needless to say, she comes Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> Saturday was supposed to be, I thought we were going to connect about the, the Christian college experience. And I think she knew that she was like, yeah, yeah I thought you were come here full of rage and anger and yeah. we were going to talk about this. Healing and deliverance. <laughs> so I thought, but no, God had a different plan. So I told Pastor Teresa about all this and, and 
yeah, I guess there's no other word but divine providence and the fact that like every time I didn't want to come here, <laughs> you guys kept throwing lifelines and you guys kept chasing. Pastor Earl literally chased me. <laughs> like, I, I guess the, the one thing I've taken out of this is like, you know, there's the healing process of just having faith in Christians is, is starting to be restored. And it's like what Giselle was saying, I honestly haven't really talked about like God or faith. It's just been the human, like just knowing that you guys are human and I'm human. You're willing to accept that because that's all I have right now. Amen, amen. Uh, can you say thank you to her? I, honestly, I was sitting there and I was just crying. I was just crying because you know, I knew that, I didn't know what Giselle was gonna write. I heard this story and then I, she wrote and then what she had to write, like match the story. You know, sometimes people just need real. They need you to be human. They need you to be real. They need you to empathize. They need you to come into their pain. They need you to accept them. They don't need you to shout scripture at them. They don't need to tell you, like, oh, do the one, two, threes to whatever, your salvation and your spiritual growth. They just need to be loved. And I believe that that is just self sovereign theme. You know, so I want to encourage you, like for those of you that you've been maybe sitting through this fireproof faith and you're like, I don't know if I can be like Daniel. I don't know if I can be like, you know, Radshak, Meshach, and Abednego. I don't know if I can be that. It's okay. God knows exactly who you are. He knows exactly how you're created. And if you surrender completely to him, the divine favor of God will come on you and he will make a way that you would never be able to make. He will make a way. So we're going to, um, I know we're over, but I'm, we're going to quickly pray for Anna because we have two Tuesdays with her and then she is going to be released to go back to Kauai. And although, you know, she's leaving this community, and she said that, and that blessed me. I finally found community, and now God's moving me to Kauai. I just reassured her that community is going to go with you. And we will continue to pray for her as she makes that transition. And who knows, maybe we'll be going out there one day, and we're going to minister with her out there for some reason, because God is going to have us do that. So would you extend your hand as we pray for her? Heavenly Father, we come to you now in awe and wonder at your divine providence and your hand over our lives, Lord God. And not just the big things, but every little thing, we know that your hand is protecting us, your hand is guiding us. Lord, we lift up my sister Anna here, and we thank you for bringing her into our fellowship. We thank you, Lord, that it is through our fellowship, through our church family, that she was able to encounter you, to encounter your love. And from there, she was able to find healing. Lord, we ask that as you have accelerated her, as she goes out from this place, that your hand would continue to be over her life. Give her protection as she goes, Lord. Divine wisdom to know every place that you are guiding her to. Give her the strength, Lord, to stand firm on the promise that she made to you, to release it all to you, to surrender it all to you, to remain faithful, Lord, as you have remained faithful. Lord, may your goodness and your mercy follow her all the days of her life and help her to know that though she leaves, her community here will never be gone, that we will always be with her in spirit and in truth, Lord God. And so we lift this up to you. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for your word. And we lift this all up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Could you give the Lord a hand clap, please? Well, we have come to the end of our service. We do have prayer ministers here. They are all wearing yellow lanyards. So I want to say and end like this. If you feel like you resonate with the story of Esther and you feel like you have an Esther anointing on your life, or you would like to have an Esther anointing on your life, where you will live in such a way that is so yielded and so surrendered 
that God in all of his glory will come upon you and you will just draw people to yourself, not because you're great, but because the God that is great is living on fire on the inside of you. If you feel like something about this story is calling unto you, respond to it. And so I'm gonna ask the prayer ministers to come forward. They're gonna be up front. You can ask any of them to pray an impartation over you um, or pray for anything that you may need. But I'm gonna dismiss us now. Uh, we have refreshments here. I'm gonna encourage you to come back next week. Next week, we're gonna go through another epic story. It's on the book of Jonah. And you're not gonna to wanna to miss that. So until we see you next week, aloha and God bless.